Well, good morning, good morning. I am starting the process. I'm gonna to try to document this a little bit for you of putting on my levelers. Uh, my levelers came from, I bought them from a company called Bigfoot. And so uh, anyway, today I'm gonna to start that process and uh, show you a few things as I go along. Okay, one thing I have discovered is that um, my mud flaps, um, don't know how, what, how well you can see these in here, but the mud flaps go all the way across. It's a continuous, it's continuous, goes all the way across, protects, I'm sure, the motor and everything from any mud or debris, but it is exactly where I need to be. It's right in the middle of where I need to put my levelers. So I'm gonna pull the entire thing off and then discover where I can put it back. But right now I'm just gonna take it all off. Uh, this is just another shot of the continuous mud flaps and uh, how they go across here. It's not gonna be a big deal to pull it off. I'm gonna pull it off and uh, take me a couple hours maybe and then I'll be able to put on my, my rear uh, leveler cylinders. Okay, I've got this single piece mud flap out of here. Uh, that was quite the trick. And uh, now I have much more space underneath here to work. Uh, let's see, where I'm gonna have to put, I'm gonna have to put the, uh, uh, the leveler right behind this shock. So, don't have a whole lot of space for welding, but I can now get in there since I've got that removed. Grind that off and weld it on. I have a sanction and permission to weld on this, this uh, frame. Some frames you can't weld on. This one is one that you absolutely can. Ain't it great? Now one of the first things you want to do is make sure that you get all the rust off of your uh, off of your frame. Now I have already verified that this frame is fine to be welded on. Uh, the way I'm going to weld it though to keep it from overheating is I'm going to weld about an inch on the top on one side, about an inch on the bottom on one side, then I'll go to the other side, inch at the top, inch at the bottom, and then I'll fill in the center. So there you go. Make sure that you uh, get all the rust off and uh, then you're ready to weld it on. In case you can't see it, there is a mark right there. And uh, uh, this is what I'm using to make sure that I'm straight. I'm sh pretty sure that the factory drilled these holes in there straight and they have washers under them. So I went over uh, an inch and a half and uh, that's where I'm gonna weld on my piece is I'm using those bolts as my straight edge to make sure it stays straight. Okay, this is the uh, hydraulic cylinder. Each one of these cylinders are rated at 17,000 pounds and they come with a bracket. Now, there probably will be modifications uh, for every vehicle, but what I did here is I called the company and verified that I could do this Instead of, it says in the book to weld the entire bracket to your frame. The problem is, if I do that with the 20 inches, 21 inches of this, of this cylinder, and then this is 12 inches, and if I take those two, then I can't get into the range of 10 to 13 inches from the ground. So, I just drew out a little deal here on my graph paper. It shows that my frame is actually nine inches uh, right there. And then the bracket itself is 12 inches. And so what we're doing is we're moving it, moving the bracket down on the frame until we only weld six inches. And then the balance, uh, you can see where I have this set. I don't have it set straight. I have it set with six and a half inches on the bottom, or six inches on the bottom, I guess. And so the frame will actually come down to about one inch uh, below the actual cylinder. And so it will weld from here up to here. 
they told me the best way to weld it is to weld one inch at the top and then one inch at the bottom then do the other side and then fill it in that way we don't overheat the the frame so that gives you an idea everything uh, in this package just works well it makes a lot of sense I couldn't ask for better help from the company their tech department has been so helpful and then these are easy to put in uh, that's just the little where the hydraulic lines fit in all this comes with it and then this is the the little unit that shows that your pad is up all the way it's a little sensor a limit switch that shows that the pad has retracted all the way so I'll be getting these welded on bless their hearts I've been calling them a lot to make sure that I'm doing this right and they don't seem to mind so I'm very excited about that so I'll be welding this on today you put this on first because it's very difficult to get to these bolts and everything before you weld but that again is going to depend on your unit uh, but what I will do is I will put a good solid hot weld one inch on the top one inch on the bottom of the which will be about right here is where the frame will be and then I'll fill it all in and then we'll do the same thing on the other side and this will be set well the um, front uh, the frame is actually in close proximity to the springs so I had um, a gentleman weld this piece on for me it's a piece of quarter inch same size as the bracket and uh, he just spot welded it top and bottom and then gave me a good uh, four inch and a half to two inch welds right here now what this will do is this will hold um, the cylinder out from the frame um, an extra three quarters of an inch from what the original bracket was so you can see there's a three quarter inch extra and uh, that will get me past so we're not touching rubbing uh, the springs in any way um, called and talked to the company they see no problem if I decide to I will put a brace across so that the two of them are tied together but I don't see a problem either that frame is very heavy okay now I didn't have anything level so I couldn't use a jack I tried to um, to lift this up it weighs uh, 58 pounds from what I figured with all this together and uh, what I did is I just took a rope and hooked a rope over the frame lifted it up and held it with the rope and then I tied the rope around something and then I put a block under it to get it up to the top now you can see that uh, I'm right at the top of my frame so I'll have a full weld there on that I've got three bolts on each side grade 8 bolts it's not going anywhere once it gets welded now right now all I've done is I tacked the top and the bottom on both sides and I'm going to take it to someone who welds for a living and let them go ahead and put a good weld on there so I don't want to have a failure later so I'm just going to take it to someone and let them do that job now you see I've got this one in it is um, a little over 10 inches see it's I think it's 11 inches from the ground and then on the other side you can see that I've got that one in too it's about the same height it's 11 inches from the ground actually I just figured that all out before I put it in here and pulled it right up to the top of the frame okay I'm putting in my automatic levelers and uh, you can see that um, right now they measure 11 inches off the ground I figured this all out before I started this and um, there is a plate that uh, Bigfoot sends you and the plate just bolts on the back of the cylinder now these cylinders I have three grade 8 bolts on each side going through the uh, adapter is actually 12 inches long 
and so it's the full length of my frame on this part right here so it'll have a good weld I tacked the top and the bottom I'm taking it to a professional welder and let him get in there and weld the two sides on it so that I don't have any failures in the future this one's in and the one on the other side's in already and the front ones are in so all of them are in yay so you can see the uh, the one on the other side there now I didn't the because the ground was so unlevel I really couldn't use my jack so I just took a rope and hooked a rope around one of the bolts and lifted it up by hand hooked the rope uh, and tied the rope off and then I put a block underneath uh, to make sure that it was all the way up and kind of forced it up with the block and then I just tacked the top bottom they weigh 58 pounds so um, uh, you know I don't know some of you that'll be really easy for you some of you maybe not so easy but it has not been that bad um, actually the people at Bigfoot uh, Quattra they have been absolutely wonderful all the tech uh, people and everything they've helped me I also have the front ones on I'll show you those now on the class A's um, these are supposed to be 10 to 13 inches off of the ground and so uh, this uh, 40 foot bus is considered a class A and this one I've done this exact same thing and I had to lengthen it out a little bit more in the front uh, I mean a little bit less in the front instead of us uh, instead of this uh, they couldn't be the same as the back so anyway that that gives you an idea and I will have full weld both sides of this one also and six uh, six bolts grade 8 bolts and then you can see the one there's one on the other side also and uh, they are all looking good Hello, baby. What day is it? It's a fever time day. Red Lobster Day. Red Lobster. Red Lobster. Happy For retirement, right? For the seafood right? lover in me, it is. That's exciting. I got you all the time now. You got me all the time. That is great. Except, except that Amy said we could now go shopping together and stuff. Oh yeah, you can. So you'll loan me to her for that. I can. <laughs> great <laughs> you're funny okay hey uh, thank you so much for watching and uh, I will complete this on the next one I actually have some parts coming in uh, on Tuesday this is Saturday the 23rd okay. so I have some more parts coming in and then I can finish it up but just wanted to say thank you guys so much for watching and life is a joy right Yes. And now I have the love of my life home with me all the time. We're going to be on the road here in a few weeks, and so it's pretty exciting. Yes, it is. I love you, Debbie. Love you Bye, too. guys. We love you so much. Thank you for watching.